How we doing YouTube? Nick Patap here from Next Gen Rehab and in today's video I'm going to be going over beta blockers, more specifically how beta blockers affect exercise intensity. Now like with any of my medication videos this is not meant to be medical advice. If you do have any specific medication related questions uh, please consult with your family doctor. Uh, if you have any specific exercise prescription questions then definitely uh, refer to your uh, cardiac rehab team or exercise physiologist. Now, uh, I did make a video on uh, beta blockers and their interactions uh, in the body and how it impacts exercise. Uh, so go ahead and, and have a look at that uh, on my page. Uh, this one in particular is gonna be how hard you should be pushing yourself um, in terms of exercise when you are taking a beta blocker. Now, just a quick recap, what do beta blockers do? Beta blockers are medications that are meant to suppress heart rate, right? So um, whether you have an arrhythmia, um, whether uh, you've had a heart attack, there can be a number of reasons why you're taking this medication, um, but its main impact is to reduce uh, and suppress your heart rate. So we can see this impacting exercise intensity, right? So what are some of the ways we measure exercise intensity if an individual is on a beta blocker? Now the first one is through what we call target heart rate, all right? So target heart rate can be acquired from what we call an exercise stress test. So think about the stress test. Um, if you've had one done, is it, it's an exercise protocol where we have the patient go get on a treadmill, hook them up to an ECG, and basically exert them to the maximum of their capabilities, right? There's different stages through this test. The speed and incline of the treadmill um, gradually increase until the uh, client can no longer uh, sustain that uh, pace, all right? So with this test, we're able to get a lot of good information. It gives us um, information on if there's any arrhythmias, uh, is the heart rate going up appropriately, blood pressure going up appropriately, is the heart getting enough blood flow, right? Is it ischemic or is it getting enough blood flow? Uh, we, as exercise physiologists, take the resting heart rate and we take the maximum heart rate and we put these into a formula known as the Carbonin formula, all right? And so using that formula, we're able to uh, get a target heart rate range for the patient. So when we exercise them in cardiac rehab, um, whether they're um, exercising with us in the monitoring setting or whether they exercise at home, they have a target heart rate setting that they can uh, work towards, all right? So that's one way we do it. And obviously, as the individual um, progresses with exercise, gets more used to their program, we're able to adjust this uh, program uh, or target heart rate accordingly. Um, <clears throat> So target heart rate is one way to do it. Uh, again, you do need to have a stress test done in order to get this measurement and a, and a cardiologist or exercise physiologist doesn't need to prescribe that target heart rate for you. The second way is what we call the Borg scale, all right? And so the Borg scale, basically you can think of it as a scale from zero to 10 and it, uh, it gives us a, a range or rating of how hard the exercise feels for you, okay? So zero to two is easy, okay? Three to five is moderate and um, six to 10 is hard, okay? So what does easy mean? So zero to two, easy. Easy meaning you can sing a song or whistle, doing the activity, all right? Uh, moderate meaning you can have a conversation or talk, so you can no longer whistle, but you can have a conversation or talk, maybe say a full sentence before having to take a breath of air, and then hard, or that six to 10 on the scale is, okay, I can't talk, maybe I can only say one or two words, but much more, ch more challenging of an activity to maintain, right? Um, so we use the Borg scale in, in cardiac rehab, we'll come around and say, how does this feel? Is this easy? Okay, we can bump it up a little bit. Is it moderate? We're exactly where you need to be. Or are you huffing and puffing? This is too hard. We need to bring the intensities up, okay? So generally speaking, we have patients in our cardiac rehab program, or if you're on a beta blocker, we do have you train in that moderate zone. Obviously, if you're someone that you know comes from an athletic background, are able to push a little bit harder, we will t dabble into that vigorous or harder zone a little bit more, where we may do interval training or where we may sustain higher workloads for a longer period of time. It does get a lot more stressful on the heart, though. All right, so that's why, generally speaking, for patients on beta blockers or cardiac rehab patients in general, we do train them in that moderate zone. Okay, and that brings me to my third point. What's another way we? measure intensity. We go off of what we call the talk test, all right? So you remember that zero to two is easy from that scale, the Borg scale, right? From zero to 10, zero to two is easy. Easy meaning you can sing a song uh, uh, or whistle, all right? So if you can sing a song or whistle, this is the best uh, for people doing warm up. okay? So just before exercise or if you're doing a cool down, that's the zone that we want you to be in. But if you continue to exercise, especially in the conditioning zone, with this easy mentality, you're not gonna make any real adaptation. So we want you to be 
in what we call the, the moderate zone. And again, if we go off of the talk test, you should be able to talk when exercising. All right, so this is the main thing, main takeaway for um, this video is while exercising, can you talk? If you can talk, great. If you can no longer talk, reduce your intensity. If you can still sing a song while you're in your conditioning phase, you're exercising too easily. You can push your intensity a little bit more, all right? And the last phase, or, or the last way to um, dictate your intensity is symptoms, right? If you're exercising and you're getting chest pain, dizziness, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, clearly something's going on, right? And, and you're either pushing yourself too hard or there may be something else. So if, if it does come on, you know, a sit down, rest, um, if it's not going away, you're following up with a medical professional. Uh, if you're finding that it's happening more and more consistently and more and more often, uh, definitely follow up with your family doctor um, or your uh, clinical exercise physiologist to see if you need to have your exercise prescription titrated. If it's something more severe, then your doctor will send you for uh, further workup or some, some testing to be done. Um, <clears throat> but these are some things we want to keep an eye on. All right, so just to wrap it up again, the four ways we can measure exercise intensity, especially with someone on a beta blocker or a target heart rate, are um, the rating of perceived exertion of the Borg scale from zero to 10. The uh, talk test, so when you're exercising, can you still talk? If the answer is yes, great. If the answer is no, maybe you need to reduce your intensity. If you can sing a song, then push. you, can, you have room to push yourself a little bit harder. Uh, and then uh, monitoring for symptoms. Now, how about if you uh, have your beta blocker dosage uh, changed, right? So in, in particular, what if you have the dosage reduced? Now, if you have it reduced, that's gonna have an impact on exercise. So remember, beta blockers suppress uh, heart rate. So if you have the dosage reduced, your heart rate's gonna go much higher, right? So we can't use the stress test or target heart rate as a uh, correct indicator now. So we have to go off of the Borg scale and how hard it feels for you. So again, as long as you're feeling comfortable, you can still talk, you're not getting any symptoms, it's a moderate or three out of three to five out of 10 on that Borg scale, we're good, all right? Um, the only definitive way to get a heart rate training zone at that point is to get another stress test done, all right? And on the other end, again, if you do have your beta blocker dosage increased, it's gonna potentially reduce your heart rate a little bit more, okay? So again, we can't go off of target heart rate, but we can use the Borg scale and we can go off of the talk test. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If there's any future videos you would like to see, uh, definitely leave them in the comment section. And once again, my name is Nick Pratap from Next Gen Rehabilitation. We'll see you in the next video.